He's coming. Just getting back. Oh, okay, there we go. Welcome to Friendship, this fine, beautiful morning, July 14th. Uh, don't forget, if you came in and got a bulletin today, uh, you're not seeing double. That is a little off skew. <laughs> skew. So you not have bad eyesight, I promise. But inside, uh, there is a tear out. If you're a first-time visitor with us, if you'll fill that out, put it in the offering plate later in the service, we'll have record of your attendance. Also on the back side of that is prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests at all, uh, please fill that out, put it in the offering plate. We can put you on the prayer chain. We all know that prayer does change everything. Don't forget, every Sunday morning at 9.45, we do have Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school for all ages, all groups, and anything. It's a great time to get deeper into the Word of God and uh, learn more about our Lord and Savior. Uh, also, if you're, if you want to join, but you're not sure where to join, uh, as a youth minister here, I'm going to invite you to come down with the youth. Uh, we're starting a new, we've started a new series about finding God through finding Nemo. So if you're interested in that, you can always join us. It's not just for youth. It would be good for anybody. Uh, Finance committee will meet today right after the service. It'll be a short meeting. It'll be back in the uh, back in one of the Sunday school classes back here uh, towards the back. Uh, VBS, well, our biggest outreach of the year, is going to be July 22nd through the 26th. It's 6 to 8 every evening. Volunteers are still needed to fill some slots. You can contact Tina with any additional details. And if you've never worked a VBS, I promise you, promise you, promise you, you will be blessed beyond belief. Um, it is one of the greatest things to ever happen is working a VBS. Uh, we also want to say thank you. All the snack tags that were back there for VBS have been taken and picked up, so we should be able to have everything that was needed. So uh, Tina wants to send her great appreciation for everybody who helped with that. It is July, and we talk about Christmas in July, so we have started our Operation Christmas Child. Uh, you can see the boxes up here. If you or your family would like to take a box home uh, anytime, uh, just let me know. I can get you a box. Uh, we will be delivering them in the middle of November. I don't have the exact date yet. Uh, our church as a whole delivered 35 Operation Christmas Child boxes last year. That was 35 lives that were changed and had a great Christmas because of y'all. Uh, we are looking to do a little bit more this year. We're hoping to get up to 50 boxes this year. Uh, this is being led by the youth. So if you have any questions, you can see me or talk to any of the youth. Uh, Men's Brotherhood will meet Saturday, July 20th. That's this coming Saturday. Uh, is it going to be here or here in, in, in the fellowship hall. LCF will be meeting July 30th. All ladies of the church are encouraged to attend. Uh, the meeting will begin at 6.30 in the fellowship hall. 
Uh, we are still needing photos of families and individuals uh, for our church records. Uh, if you ha have not taken uh, any new family photos, uh, please get in contact with Angie to uh, set up a time to do this. Also today, the church closet clean out is going to be happening. Uh, that'll be at 245. If you have any questions about that or would like to volunteer, you can talk to Angie after the service and she'll give you more information on that. Uh, also, the youth are looking for some college interns. So if you are know of anybody of college age, male or female, we're looking for one or two uh, college interns to help out uh, with the youth to give them uh, some leadership and a great place for volunteering uh, hours or anything like that. If you know of anybody in college that would be interested in doing an internship uh, with the youth, please let me know, give me their name or have them contact me. I can get them more information on that. Other than that, Ennis, I think you had an announcement. several inquiries regarding what the church will be doing for the Crawford family and the loss of Hugh. And I've talked to Jeff and Terry briefly. I will be contacting uh, Hugh's home church today, which is New Beginnings Church, and I'm almost certain that they're going to want to do something on the day of the service. And arrangements have not been done yet, have not been completed yet, so we don't know when that's going to be. But I think what we're going to do is I'm going to call Angie and find out what's going on there. But if you would like to bring some food Tuesday afternoon to the church, we will bring it all here, and then I'll deliver it to, to Bobby's house. And then that way we can get everything at one time, and then the family will share in what we take to them. So Tuesday afternoon, between 5 and 6, if you'd like to bring some addition of some sort, then I'll make sure that it gets to the Crawfords. Thank you very much. I can just imagine he was up, up in heaven right now just dancing and singing. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Proverbs chapter 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 2, 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You know, everybody in here has watched the news for weeks now. Right now, we need to just focus on trusting in the Lord. Because when we trust in man, they're going to let us down. There's no politician, there's no government of the world that's going to do the things of Christ. I'm not discouraging anybody from voting. Don't think that. But God really put this on my heart this morning. We need to trust in the Lord. It's time for the believers of Jesus Christ to step up and trust in the Lord. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's just trust in the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day, Father. I thank you that I can stand here, Lord, in a place, in a country where I can just publicly pray to you because there's so many places in the world where people are killed for that. And Lord, sometimes I believe that us as believers, so-called Christians, don't, don't get that anymore, Lord that we've been privileged to have a, a place to come to and to freely be able to worship you, Lord. We see all the things that, that's coming against that in this world and in this country, but it's what your Bible says it will be, Father God. It's not for us to try and figure out or do something about. It's for us to trust in you. Now, God, have your way in our hearts and our mind. Have your way in the, the governor's mind, the president's mind. All of the senators and the congressmen, Lord, your word tells us that they were appointed by you, Lord. They're there because of you, not because of their own will. Now, God, help us to understand what we have to do in our lives that would bring joy to you, Lord.
Lord, that would just absolutely honor you in every way with our life, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We pray for Jerusalem this morning. Help us, God. We need you more now than we ever had before. And we trust in you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Friendship. I'd like to stand, we'll start worship. <clears throat> you know, like I said, I just imagine Hughes up in heaven and just dancing and singing because he used to stand right over here and it was just so awesome to watch him worship. And I could just imagine him being down here is nothing compared to what he's been doing up there past 24 hours.
grateful and have gratitude for things. You know, Jesus is the sunshine. And if we always look to Him as our sunshine, because He is the light of the world, He is the one that just brightens our world and and He's our way to heaven. And He loves us so much. So when we get down and out, it's, it's, it's important for us to look to Him. There's a dark and a troubled side of life There's a bright and a sunny side too Though we meet with the darkness and strife The sunny side we also may view Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life It will help us every day The storm and his fury broke today Crushing hopes that we cherish so dear Chords and storms and in time pass away The sun again will shine bright and clear Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life It will help us every day It will brighten all the way If we'll keep on the sunny side of life Let us greet with a song of hope each day Though the moment be cloudy or fair Let us trust in our Savior Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life It will help us every day, it will brighten all the way If we'll keep on the sunny side of life Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side Keep on the sunny side of life It will help us every day this morning.
the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way. If we'll keep on the sunny side of life. If we'll keep on the sunny side of life. And as we continue with our service, the time that we give back, a portion of what God has blessed us with. Brother Leo is our Deacon of the Week. Everything I 
up this morning.
up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than anything that you can do I just want you Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for the great and wonderful worship that you give us, Lord, and just thank you for everything that you do for us. Lord, just in the message today, Lord, let it, your words be heard and let the Holy Spirit fill this place and people hear what they need to hear from you, not from me. For it's in your name we pray, amen. So today's a little different. Jim is gone off to Europe and enjoying a nice restful vacation with him, his wife, Carolyn. So hopefully they both come back and they don't kill each other, but I'm sure they're listening in somewhere. Uh, I think they're in the Netherlands right now, uh, Amsterdam. So they are having a great time. Um, I see the post that he posts on Facebook and he's checking a lot of things off his bucket list. So it's an incredible time that he's having with his wife. So just keep them in your prayers as you pray throughout the week that they continue to have a safe trip and they make it back and he'll be back next week. Um, came in this morning and Charlie saw, saw my shirt. It says, love one another. And he even made the comment. It's like, you know, you're missing something there. There's something more important than that. I'm like, you're right, there is. And that's gonna bring us to our verse today. So if you're following along, we're gonna read out of Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. And this is well into Jesus' ministry. And this is when the Pharisees are now, are sick and tired of this Jesus guy you know, making changes and everything and not doing what they think is right and, you know, stepping on their power. It says, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him the question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. When asked what is the greatest commandment, it was set up to be a trap of Jesus. You know, they wanted him to say this or that so they could trap him and say, well, what about this? Well, what about that? But Jesus came back with the most honest answer there is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. You know, a long time ago when I was in youth, we won't talk about how long ago. You know, some of the youth are still trying to guess my age, so we won't tell how many years ago that was. Um... My youth minister taught me a secret, and that's the secret I want to share with y'all today. It's a secret of how to be a Christian and be able to do anything that you want to do in life. Anything. If you want to do it, you can do it if you follow that one rule, and that's by following the greatest commandment. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And at that point, you can do anything you want. But what does that mean? Especially as a youth, that can be taken the wrong way. Because so many times, us as humans want to do things that go against what the Word of God says. But when you truly love somebody, your mind, your heart, and your soul, all you want to do is do what they want. You want to make them happy. For everybody that's married out there, that you remember back to the time of falling in love with your spouse and how that time went for you. It became a time that it was no longer about what you wanted. It was not about what you were looking for in your life. But when you met that right person, it was about what they wanted. How can you make them happy? What can you do for them? If you're not married yet, it could be a pet. You know, you have a pet that you absolutely love. You would do anything for that pet. If it gets sick, it didn't matter how much money it spent. You'd take it to the vet. You'd do what was needed. And sadly, the same thing could be said about many other things in life. TV shows. Trust me, there are TV shows that come around every now and then that you can see all over social media. Everybody prepares themselves to sit on their couch at that certain time of day, at that certain hour, so they could watch the newest episode, so they can talk about it over the next week. There have been many of those kind of shows. And that's all because you loved it. It didn't matter what else was going on in life. You wanted to be a part of that. So the first commandment is simple and easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And then you can do anything you want because your wants will become what's, what Jesus wants. It will change your life forever and it will change your outlook of everything around you. So what now? Now that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you have truly fallen in love with Jesus, what's next? Well, let me tell you a story. Me and two friends were walking through a park. It was a beautiful summer day. This is a true story, by the way. It was a beautiful summer day Temperature probably about 87, 88, wasn't too hot. Beautiful park, absolutely beautiful, uh, huge park. It took us about an hour to walk from one side to the other. Um, families out having picnics, uh, children out playing on the playgrounds, playing soccer, all kinds of different things. And we were just enjoying the scenery. We were enjoying everything around us. And then we realized two o'clock and we still haven't eaten. So we need to go find something to eat. So we head to the edge of the park as there was no food inside this park. And we're like, there's gotta be something around. When we see this sign, it says uh, VIPS, bright red letters place they call Veeps. So we're like, well, let's check this out. And it go in and it's just this little backwoods, little bookstore area. It looked like a little college bookstore because it had t-shirts. It had all kinds of books and everything. And we were like, oh, well, we thought this was a restaurant. And they said, oh, the restaurant's in the back. So we walked to the back of this place and we have a seat probably five tables at this restaurant. So we're like, we're not really sure what we're getting into here. And they hand us the menus, very tiny. And like, you couldn't even see the, these tables from the road through the bookstore. And we sat down and say, well, what, what, what's good here? And he said, oh, you got, you got to try the bacon cheeseburger. And I was like, okay, well, we'll try the bacon cheeseburger. So we wait, 
it comes out, it sits in front of us, probably one of the most beautiful bacon cheeseburgers you've ever seen. And then we took that first bite. And it was the most amazing cheeseburger that you could ever imagine. It was cooked to perfection. It was so juicy that all the toppings were just so fresh and so perfect on this burger. Like, you, it's undeniable how great this burger was. The ratio of condiments to the burger was just absolutely perfect in every possible way. Over the next two days, we ate there three more times. This burger is the most amazing thing you will ever try. And I will tell anybody in the world that when you're in that area, you have better go try that bacon cheeseburger. Now, this story of mine took place 29 years ago, and I can still taste that burger. At that time, I was in Madrid, Spain. So sadly, I haven't had that burger since. But trust me, when I make it back to Madrid, Spain, I will have that burger again. Jim may bring me back one, but I don't think they're going to Spain, sadly. But, and yes, every once in a while, I still get that craving for that bacon cheeseburger that's so amazing that, yes, I look online just to make sure the place is still open, make sure they haven't shut down because of the economy over in Spain or anything like that, and yes, they are still open. It's still at the edge of the park. It's still in the back of a bookstore. It's still a tiny little place. They have opened up more shops in Madrid, so I may try one of the other locations and see if it's just as good. But that's the thing. This burger is so good. When I got back home from Spain, that was one of the few things we all could talk about is how amazing this burger was. But as Christians, isn't that how we should be? If we love the Lord our God and we have been saved by Jesus, why do we keep that secret silence? Why? This is the most amazing thing that could ever happen in your life. Why are you not shouting from the mountaintops? Why are you not sharing it with everybody? You know, we just went through 26 weeks with a couple breaks for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and every, everything like that of going through Revelations. We've read the end of the book now. We know as Christians and as church members how it's going to end. We know that. Why are we not out there telling people? Why are we not so excited and so passionate about our love for Christ that every conversation we have, we're not talking about, have you met Jesus? It's that simple. We should be. Because that is our greatest thing. You know, I always pictured... I always pictured when we talk about end times and as he was going through revelations and, you know, we talk about how signs are coming. It's getting close. Nobody knows the time or day, but I've always pictured. It's like, you know, what has taken so long? Because even back, even back in the 70s, 70s, 80s, and I'm not talking about 1900s. I'm talking about 070. 0780 year AD, they thought it was close. So what's keeping God from coming? I always imagine in the back of my head that, you know, the angels are sitting there, have the trumpets ready, about to blow, and God stops them and says, you know what? 
my servant Jason over here is about to talk to somebody about me for the first time. Let's see how that plays out first. Oh, my servant Elizabeth over here, she's going on a mission trip next week and is gonna share the gospel with people who have never heard it. Let's wait until they hear the gospel and see how many more people can be saved. What's scaring me now and why I think we're getting so close to the end times is because us as Christians are now no longer going out to share the gospel of Christ. We're too scared. You know, the world doesn't like us anymore. We're not this great thing that everybody looks at and says, oh, well, there's hope there. They're against us. But there's reasons for that. But I think that's why it seems like it's getting closer and closer because there's no longer people going out. There's no longer people willing to talk about Christ because you might hurt somebody's feelings. And that is truly sad. So now what? Third point I wanna make is how can we go out and share Christ? Well, first, I wanna show you a demonstration. These are two Cokes, same can, exactly the same. No difference. One bought right after the other out of the Coke machine in here. Came out of the same case. Same batch, I'm sure. There is absolutely no difference in these two cans. That You're right. One's empty and one's full. So, what's the difference? One's filled with the Holy Spirit and sealed because they love Christ and they know the difference. One's not. So what happens when storms come along and issues happen? Well, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, the storms are gonna take you down. No doubt about it. If you're not completely full of the Holy Spirit and filled and sealed with Christ in your heart, Anything that comes along can destroy you. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. It doesn't matter if you believe that you're a Christian. If you're not filled and you truly love Christ, any storm that comes along can break your heart. But if you get completely filled with the Holy Spirit, it's amazing what that does. The exact same can no difference. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can go through anything because Christ is going to be there to hold the weight. So what now? How do we now go out and talk about Christ? When it, you have to go into a world that doesn't like the church anymore, that doesn't get it. I got an example. Charlie laughed at me, he said, I love water. And of course I do. I think it's amazing you can't live without water for three days and you know, Christ died for three days and you know, there's, there's stuff there. But when we're filled, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we know God and he fills us up and we can dip this and we can share Christ. And this is how they see us. Nice water, right? But how does the world see us now? You know, you add politics into this world and all kinds of things happen, right? So, Politics dilute how the world sees the church and how they see us. What other things? Oh, that friend of yours, they saw you make a mistake one time. You know, they don't realize you asked for forgiveness later and how bad you felt. 
they see the hatred among a lot of so-called Christians. You know, just more. Trash. And it fills up. And it fills up. And it fills up. And this is how the world sees the church. And when we try to give people the church, this is what people think they are getting from the church. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not plan on drinking that. Nobody would want to drink that. And this is why it is so hard for us to go out into the world now and witness. This is why we're scared because the few times we do and we try to talk about Christ and we try to talk about the church, things get in the way, whether it's politics, whether it's hatred, whether it's whatever it is. And this is what people see. But there's something that can change that. Too many times when we go out and try to witness, we try to give them the church. We try to give them rules. We try to give them this, that. Oh, well, you can't do that anymore if you want to become a Christian. You can't do this. You can't do that. That's not what we should be doing. All we have to do is give them Jesus. None of us in this room ever became a Christian on our own accord. We looked and it took Jesus to pull us out and to save us. None of us are good enough. Trust me, I know I definitely am not. I make plenty of mistakes. And I do have a friend over here that, you know, loves to point out those mistakes to me on a daily basis. And she will let me know constantly of all the mistakes that I make. But that's the thing. If I try to go and give people the church, that's what they're going to see. And this is what they're going to get because this is the church. One of the other things my old youth minister used to tell me the first time I ever got on a committee, I was 15 years old and I got elected to the head committee at the church I was at. And my youth minister pulled me aside the first time before I went into the meeting. He said, I just want you to know, don't let the politics of the church ruin your faith in Jesus. And I mean, that took me off. I'm like, how could the politics of the church? The church is the church. The church is about Jesus. Over the years, I've realized what he meant by that. Because too many times on the daily basis of the church, the daily basis, and I'm not talking about just this church. I'm talking about the church as a whole and every individual church out there. Politics get in hurt feelings, drive people away, all because of the politics. And why is that? Because we stopped talking about Jesus. Jesus is all that truly matters. When you fall in love with him, like I said at the beginning, you can do anything you want and you can change this world. So what does it look like to give only Jesus. So we'll say that this is Jesus. Same water, right? But what if we only give them what comes through Jesus? then you're giving them something they can believe in.
and something they can take hold of and something they can live off of. Everything else in their life will change on their own when it's time. Don't look at the world with hatred, especially at the time that we're coming up on now. The world is so divided by so many things, whether it be politics, whether it be marriages or anything like that. The world is so divided that as a church, if we want to become important in this world again, we've got to learn that we got to give them Jesus. And as soon as we do that, the world will change. Don't let the end times come and the trumpets blast until you go out and you share the gospel with everyone. I always said one of my biggest fears is I'm gonna get to heaven one day and I'm gonna look down and see somebody who didn't make it in and it's somebody that I talked to on a daily basis that I forgot to share the gospel with or share Jesus with. Or they looked at my life and said, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want any part of it. That would break my heart. And I'm sure there may be times out there that people say that and people believe that, but I hope not. I hope, I hope and I try my hardest to live my life in a way that people can always see Christ in me. I'm not perfect by any means, but my love for Christ is perfect. I love him beyond anything and everything. And no matter what kind of things I'm going through, no matter how much I'm hurting on the inside, I know I have my best friend who's always there to comfort me and fill me up. Back when I was in high school, these bracelets came out. It says, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I always said, even back then, I said, this is one of the worst things that's ever happened to the church because this became a very popular fad. Everybody was wearing them. And when you saw them, you assumed everyone knew what it meant that what would Jesus do and that that person was a Christian. Sadly, because it was a fad, everybody was wearing them, even the non-Christians. And people started looking at the people who wore them and said, you know what, if that's what Christianity is, I don't want it. (laughs) But it's time to start sharing and showing people that Christ was completely different from anything and everybody that's ever stepped foot on this planet. And we need to share what Jesus would do. On the way out of church today, in the back, in an offering plate, are a bunch of these WWJD bracelets. I want each one of y'all to take one. If you have somebody at the house or a friend, take one for them. I'm not saying you have to put it on your wrist, but put it in a place that you see it. Put it in a keychain. Put it somewhere in your car. Put it somewhere to constantly remind you of what would Jesus do. And I'm not talking about the easy answer because we all know what Jesus would do in so many situations. But it's in those tough situations that Jesus shocked everybody that we still need to know what would Jesus do and we need to imitate Christ because that's how people are going to come back to the church. When and only when we give them Jesus. So as Amanda and Ryan come to play uh, our closing invitation song, Heart of Worship, I want everybody to think and believe it's all about Jesus. And if we want to change this world, and we want to get it back to way 
it used to be a long time ago and not the craziness that it is today. We just need to talk about Jesus. Nothing else, nothing more. Love everyone and talk about Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you, Lord, for everything you've done in our lives. Lord, thank you for always being there. Lord, thank you for being my best friend and always being there for me, even when I don't deserve it. Lord, be with us as we go out into the world and we learn to share your love that you showed us with everybody else. And let us not make it complicated, Lord. Just let, them, let us just talk about your son, Jesus, because that's all that truly matters and what he did for us. In your name we pray, amen.
talking about knowing God's word and keeping it to yourself and then you turn around with this message this morning as I was doing my studies I was in Luke chapter 12 verse 42 and the Lord replied a faithful sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. And then I turned around and I'm going to read you verbatim what I typed out this morning. We are servants or stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Jesus requires his servants to be faithful and wise. To be God's steward is not an honor to be sought, but a responsibility to be accepted. I love it when, when God works. Y'all remember one thing. This is not the mission field. The mission field is when we walk out these doors and we're in the community, getting groceries, pumping gas, at the library. No matter where you're at, there's folks around you. This little town is not little anymore. There are so many people coming from all over. I mean, there's people from all over the world in Cartersville, Georgia. Our responsibility is to tell them about Jesus and to love them. You don't have to like them, but God says you have to love them. So remember that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just humbly come before thee, Father, and we thank you for just giving this opportunity for confirmation. Father, we need to just continue with our hearts open, our ears open, and then open our mouths and tell people about you. Father, give us the tenacity to get out there and just tell people about Jesus. Be with us. Be with us. And know we love you. Father, we love you. And just give us the words that we need when we come across somebody. And as we leave these doors today, and as we're out in the community, remember the mission field. Remember the mission statement. Remember what God told you to do. We pray in that awesome, precious, precious name of Jesus. And the whole family said, amen. amen. Love you all. Have a great day.